Welcome back, ladies and gents, to another awesome episode of The Critic Court. Right now, we're going to review for you the Rings of Power season finale. I think this would make it the eighth episode of the season. But to correct me on all of my flaws, I have my awesome co-host, Jordy. Hello. And Malcolm, a.k.a. Toke. How you doing? Now, we're going to just give a little review of what the uh thoughts were on our season finale here and then at the end we're going to talk about what we thought about the season as a whole so for this i like this one a lot i think a lot of things came through and actually made sense they connected a ton of storylines which i enjoyed um jordy you brought up a couple of pressing issues so i actually want you to talk first so that way i can like piggyback off of things when i want to all Good. right, I am, here, <laughs> I am here to rain on everyone's parade. I just yeah, finished my are. second viewing of it. Um, did like it. I did enjoy it. I originally thought it was the best episode of the season. I got to go back on that now to what was it, episode six with the battle? Yeah. yeah, yeah that, was I gotta, that was one of my favorites. I think that's going to be my favorite. Um, so. We're just going to jump right into the spoilers. There's going to be no rhyme or reason for the order of these cons. I just had my notepad and I wrote them down as I was watching it. Um, so why the fuck did Galadriel not say anything about Sauron being alive and there? Even though her whole journey has been, oh, I need to prove Sauron is real. My people tried banishing me. They tried getting rid of me. They tried yeah. Everything. I need more elves to help me fight Sauron because he's alive. Gosh, like I get no. that he, she did help him out, but they're all fooled just as much as she is right now. So it's not like they can really be that angry to where they would cast her out or anything. At least not worth not mentioning. Yeah. I still don't understand how Sauron got on that like driftwood anyways. I think it was something that he had somewhat conducted in a way i i'm not 100 percent sure they haven't explained that that. i'm sure we might stumble upon like the explanation behind that but that i can get over that that's no that's just a little thing my next con number two um so we've been building up to when the rings would finally get forged right yep I feel like it happened so quick. I feel like it just... Oh, here. Resolved. Here's how we make them. Um, We only blew up the kiln once. (laughs) I know Halibrand was Sauron, but I feel like we were leaning towards, like, him learning how to create these rings, not him already knowing all this shit, like, oh, do this, this, and this, and you'll figure it out. Um, And hit... On top of that, I'm going to piggyback because of my second um, gripe regarding that whole thing um, is right behind it. Uh, his performance when he finally reveals that he's Sauron by the river, it felt like very cartoon villainy. Um, he goes from playing this like modest guy to all of a sudden, <laughs> I am the villain who <laughs> <They> found me. <laughs> and... But the rest of that scene, I did love. I will admit, like the whole dream sequence with Sauron, I thought that was well shot. That whole absolutely that shot of it, the camera rotating and looking at the water with it being Sauron and Gladriel right next to each other. That mm, chef's kiss. Um, next <laughs> thing, Gandalf not attempting to heal Sadak, even though he can grow a fucking forest. Yeah. All this shit got squandered down. He don't know how to use his powers yet, bro, fully. He don't even know who he is. He didn't even attempt. Yeah, bro. I wanted to see an attempt. Like, if he would have attempted and he would have failed, then I would have been like, oh, all right. It is what it is. Yeah, there was no, like, effort. He attempted to grow that tree, Bracken. Look. That's what I'm saying. And the tree grew. (laughs) After, after he caused some damage a little bit to it. Well, he, that was a dead branch, and it had to fall off for the tree to grow back. <laughs> Listen, if he's out, if Sadak had to lose like a kidney or a foot, then bet you so be it. 
also picking Push him in one of those wagons. <laughs> See, I'm starting to tie all of my little nitpicks together. <laughs> Same thing with him. The um I know who you are, like the Istal or whatever, the wizard, when it's those white robe people saying it to him and he says, I'm good. It was really on the nose, like bah. um, it felt very cheesy, so bra- so boppery. Um, not really fitting with this. And then here are two things that are also related. Um, it felt rushed after the pacing of the season, like literally these things could have spanned at least three or four episodes and those episodes could have contrib- like benefited from that great what about like a whole episode on making the rings a whole yeah. episode on making the rings a whole episode on the whole gandalf and white robe people reveal and they just crammed it all into one and then mm-hmm. following pacing the long ass wait we're gonna have after this yeah, I feel like cool. there was no like real cliffhanger grip moment to where it's gonna make people want to come back. Yeah, bro, that was that's so upsetting that they're gonna take like two, three years to come back. Like, what but those are my cons. No, well, I mean, they put so much money into honor. it. Like, they just threw all the money into the show just for it to like what you you only had one episode that like pretty much like summarize the whole season i was gonna say all the important stuff that you're gonna remember from the season literally happened in this episode nothing story yeah. wise like propelled this ep- this show forward up until this season finale like it felt nope. like even the battle i mean they, they had to introduce all the characters one by one oh yeah they, they had i get that and we didn't well, even you're get gonna, like stretch out of, like, bullshit, sure. then why not stretch out good shit? Like yeah. the, all like the crap that like we just didn't want to see it. We're like, why are we like seeing this? Like it just seems irrelevant right now. It still is kind of just like irrelevant to where I wish, like Jordy said, we got some of this stuff more that was in this final episode. Like yeah. this whole episode could have been like three, four episodes. It felt like literally everything was so rushed. Mm -hmm. Like we were hopping from this thing to this thing, back to this thing. And it was just two storylines, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It just, as soon as it started, they fucking found uh, Gandalf quick as hell. Like they went over the rings so quick. They could have easily added that scene and cut out a little bit of last week's and put that scene in there like you know how they burned down all the stuff with the harfoots that could have connected right into like all that stuff and it would have been more effective like that's my problem with the show it feels like it's also an adhd show where like they'll focus on one thing for a little bit but then jump to another thing and there's just too many storylines to really not get into it They'll mention super specific details for things, but then it's like, okay, but you're not going to like, we don't know why that's important. Like the the gemstones that they use to forge the rings. Like he was like, oh, these are like sacred from like Middle Earth. But then why did they get forged with the rings though? Like they didn't need to be. Like you could have just made the rings, right? Mm. Or like the only silver and gold was found in like Galadriel's dagger. Like you didn't, you just, you didn't have any more of that anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say those elves like, don't have any. Gold it's an elf dagger. They don't need. They don't. They don't got really much resources. You see how much they reach out to everybody else for help. That's true. But like these are like, this was like an elf smith like weapon. You know, like you'd think like they had like more of like those resources. Mm. I don't know. The the whole. Showing the uh, uh, Calum Calbrimbor or whatever, Calbrimbor. Yeah, he, cool. he could have. He he. I feel like he should have peeped that that was Sauron. He should have peeped that Hellbrand was Simron Sauron and shit. Yeah. Once, he, once he started like stating facts and all that shit, like he been around there. But the fucking uh, what's the whole the whole fight though with 
the stranger, well, Gandalf and uh, Nomad and the Aspect and whatever they that that fight was dope. It was dope. I liked it, but yeah, like like Jordy said, it was just rushed. They completely got red hopped right into it once the episode started. Like I was like, what? And then for Nori and all of them to be there too, quick as hell. Like, like where did they even? Where did they even start? Where did the Nomad and the uh, Aspect? Where did they all start? Like once they told them where he went, it was just. It was still good, but it was. It felt like it could have been stretched out even longer. They didn't have to go into that whole sh- shindig with Adar. I mean, they did kinda. Because they had to show how the Southlands became Mordor. Uh, was yeah. Mordor. But, yeah. It was, still, it was still pretty good. I liked it. The highlights brought up the most questions. Where, and where I, you? like I said, I almost, they answered a lot of questions in this one. Um mm-hmm. But for me, it actually didn't raise that many questions. It more just okay, answered and to. didn't really set a whole lot up for me for the second season. Like, yes, we did finally get the rings. Yes, we found out Gandalf's here, but we and we found out Sauron. But they didn't really like leave us with any kind of cliffhanger or something to keep us attached to wait those two or three years. Yeah. yeah. Like when it gets announced about season two, I will probably watch it, but it's not something I'm like needing to see tomorrow. Like I felt no, that could be something I'll forget about over the years, and then when it comes out again, I'll be like, okay, like I'll try to like watch it when it comes out, but if I don't, then I'll just binge it. I love how our reaction has shifted from last night being super excited about it. And now we've sat with it. And this is probably the most harsh we've been on a Lord of the Rings episode. Well, so like, far this season. It was still a good episode because a lot of big reveals happened, but at the, for it to just happen and then this, it all just end. I think this episode more so than anything, almost like the She-Hulk season finale I think it almost retroactively made the rest of the season worse because so much happened and it just feels like the pacing was so like off-putting from the rest yeah. of it. It almost yeah. felt like a Game of Thrones season 8 situation. Dude. This one Bad. episode was the <laughs> equivalent Bad. to... Now I just made myself dislike it even more, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's just uh, because uh, all of my gripes right now are a lot of my gripes with season eight. Like the pacing was just so weird compared to what we were used to. As far as what Ooh. Game of Thrones, yeah, no, just in general for shows, like even for our Westworld shows that we saw, like for pacing and things, this just was wrong like they just went about it wrong they had a good build and like they had a good world it was executed poorly though and i feel like that's the problem here where i'm starting to lean more negative than positive anybody can do those reveals like technically the show is beautiful to watch but how they're constructing the story and telling the story as well as the pacing the whole it just feels clunky and yeah. kind of messy. Like it's almost stumbling itself to the finish line. Like trying yeah. to hit these key points yeah. and know how to flesh it out. No, I'm like with you. The being... only relationship that I actually got attached to this entire season was Elrond and Durin. Mm-hmm. And yeah. obviously Durin, his wife, anything with the dwarves really. Anything with the dwarves was a plus for me. And I they took that away from me this episode. So another negative. Uh I mean like I said, it was a good episode overall, but yeah, it was it was rushed. Like I feel like they took their time with every single episode besides this one. They it was just they didn't get too deep and descriptive with it. Yeah. Like they, 
to do with the other one. They were like, all right, you want it here. Do we want to get into our final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think we can. And final thoughts and final thoughts on the season. Yeah. So, yeah. first. Oh, let me see. The season, I would say overall, I give it a solid. I give it a solid A. I give it a solid A season overall. I give it a solid A. Now, uh, this episode, uh, I give it a C plus. I give it a C plus. The reason I say that is because, like I said, they, the every single episode leading up to this, they did they did their part. They delivered well. Everything that they everything that they informed us on was needed, you know, splitting up into all the fucking lands and the characters. Sometimes it was too dragged out too long, but it was still needed. Like I said, it's like this is right. They said it's supposed to be like the before the range, you know, the prequel. But the episode, this episode, it was just, it felt like they just made a, a you know, just made a sloppy sandwich and threw it on the plate. You know? <laughs> oh, hundred yeah. percent. I will go with mine. Um, so this episode, <laughs> you guys have witnessed me drop it a whole letter grade in my head. Um, so I'm gonna go with C minus on the episode just because the story, yeah, it was gonna be good because they were gonna do all these big reveals, but in terms of pacing, in terms of like making sense, tying it all together, it just. It felt rushed. It felt clunky. Um, and then for the season as a whole, I'm going to match it. C minus. Um, I had a lot of expectations. I think my first watching experience was kind of clouded by the fact that we were in the movie theater and I'm seeing it early. Um, so now that I've had time to kind of sit in it, it really was kind of a letdown. Over to you, Eric. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that for this episode, it's probably like a B minus just because I did like the reveals. I did like the dream scene a lot. I like that we could see the rings forged, the season as a whole. I think C minus is very accurate. Like I don't see myself like recommending the season to watch. I just see myself recommending certain episodes of the season to watch. Like that's all I'm going to do. Unless but, you're a big Lord of the Rings fan or something, it's really hard for me to recommend this to somebody who isn't huge into fantasy. Like Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, I feel like I can recommend to more people easily than this. Yeah, but anyways, that's our show for the day, guys. Like and subscribe, support the court. We appreciate you all for tuning in.